In this video, we're going to look at the new LZX Industries DW03 Dual Oscillator. This is a foundational module in the Generation 3 lineup. It features two wideband video oscillators with four different waveform outputs. You've got a sine, a square, a saw, and a triangle. It features a wide range of frequencies, going from LFO speeds all the way up to the highest video rates, even in HD resolutions. It has two frequency CV inputs, one of which has an attenuverter. And it also has a reset input for syncing the oscillator to things other than the internal, vertical, and horizontal syncs. So in this first patch, let's take a look at just some basic oscillator functionality. I'm going to start with a sine wave. And we'll go in here to a matrix mixer, which is patched to the output. It's just so I can get some mixing and color going on. And here you'll see very typical video oscillator behavior. You've got your frequency knob. Range is set all the way to the left, which is synced to both vertical and horizontal at the highest rate. As we move down to the range controls, the next one is synced only to vertical and not to horizontal, which may look chaotic, but it can give you some very interesting glitchy textures. The next one is synced both to vertical and horizontal. It's a lower frequency range, so you get these horizontal bars. Moving on, we have some LFOs. So this is a very slow rate. This is a little bit faster. And this one actually starts to get up into scrolling horizontal bars. This is, again, not synced. So you get some nice scrolling motion. Once you get to this side, once you get past middle, nothing is synced. And it just goes up into higher frequency ranges. So we can get scrolling bars. Or we can also use the reset input to sync it to a variety of external shapes, which is very cool. So here I'm just syncing to an output from the dual shape. You can see as we go through these ranges, you're not going to get much when the oscillator itself is very slow. So that's something to be aware of. You typically want to use these higher frequencies when you're using an external sync. Okay. So of course we have two different oscillators. Uh, one thing that's nice about that is you can use one for FM. So I'm gonna take this triangle wave output, go into the frequency input. And my second oscillator is at a very slow speed. But you can see as I get out of LFO ranges, a variety of things are possible. Here I'm just using this very slow LFO. <clears throat> if I switch the main oscillator down, you'll see we'll get up and down movement, or we can get left and right movement. If I go too high, if the modulating oscillator is a higher frequency than the oscillator being modulated, you're not gonna get a whole lot of results. So you always wanna make sure Oscillator that's being modulated is uh, ideally at a higher frequency. You can get some very complicated patterns. And by working in 1080 high definition using the ESG3, you get some really spectacular results. And of course, we can also combine these two oscillators using functions like keyers, filters, etc. So I'm just going to take two different outputs here. And we'll go into a keyer. And I'm going to just set one to uh, vertical bars, one to horizontal bars. And this is where the power of the oscillators to create patterns really comes into focus. So you can see now I'm mixing these sine waves together and we're seeing a very sinusoidal shape. I'm using one oscillator to change the keying threshold and the other to provide the basic shape. So now because we have multiple different shapes, let's see what this looks like. If we bring in a few different channels. So we've got two signs there. We can have two squares. 
on this other channel. We could see what that looks like. So then we get boxes. And then let's do triangles for the third. So we'll do triangle waves. And get these kind of triangle teeth. And just to show you guys what saw waves look like, we'll get these kind of bumpy asymmetric shapes. I'll set this back here. And of course we can combine all of these. And I just do red, green, and blue. you can start to get a really wide variety of different patterns. And now just for fun, let's take this slower oscillator and use that to modulate the top one just a little bit. So we can kind of make these zoom as if they were moving perhaps. And we could also unsync this, change it to a range like that. And if you're the sort who gets bored of all these straight lines, uh, we can go into the reset input of one of ours and patch in something like a dual shape generator and start to get some less uniform types of patterns. So that should give you a good basic understanding of the primary function blocks of the dual oscillator. So now let's try a couple more patches to see what this thing can really do. So in this next patch, I'm gonna get a few more modules involved to show you how a dual oscillator can be employed for more than just basic patterns and squiggly lines. Now in this example, I am gonna use a keyer. So I'm gonna get that hooked up first. So we've just got some nice vertical bars and I'm gonna use the dual shape generator to reset this oscillator just to give it a little bit of a shape. So I'll show you the basic idea here, which is that I wanna get these <clears throat> kind of rolling hills. We're gonna do a little bit of a landscape so this general pattern looks pretty nice. I could also do pyramids or, you know, switch this to a lot of different types of shapes, these waves. Uh, but I want to stick to these hills. Uh, obviously they're a little bit high. I kind of want to bring those down to the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to use a processing module to get there. We'll just go out of here into the reset. And then I can kind of move these up and down the screen. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, and now that I have my hills, I'm gonna use another dual oscillator to start to rough in our background image. So you could see here, right now it's just keying A over B. But what I really want is that to just disappear behind the hills. So I'm gonna take another output from this same shape generator and use that as my key. So you can start to see what's happening here. And there we go. So if I tune this just right, it's gonna keep those bars more or less behind the hills. There'll be a little bit of a blurry edge, but that's kind of nice. It'll give it a little bit of a shadow there in the background. So then I could play with these ranges and get some idea of you know what I might want for a background. And I think maybe what I'll try to do is find something cool to frequency modulate this with so it isn't just a bunch of bars. So, you know, you could do something like this. It's going to get a little, a little kooky and chaotic. we go up to a very high range here. So now it'll have a little bit more direct interaction with those hills. That's not really what I want. So I think I'm going to go back to my dual shape generator since I have another shape to play with. There we go. And try to get some nice wavy looking lines here. And one thing to keep in mind when using an oscillator of any sort is that, you know, you, it's very easy to get these repetitions of lines, uh, lots of different frequencies across the screen. But sometimes what's really nice is just a single bar or two or three, you know, a little bit more of a subtle effect. So I've got this going on, and now I just want to add 
some additional motion to that. Uh, because this is the sine wave output, this is a nice gradient that I can use to process with further tools. So as opposed to the square, which would give me this hard edge, which is maybe what you want. But in this case, I'm going to try to add a little bit more movement to that. So I'm going to use this passage. You could also use a processor module for this. I happen to only have one. And then I can take all three of these outputs. And I'm going to come up with a nice kind of sky looking color mix here. I'm going to need to do this. And then of course, I can add some modulation into these. So I'm going to get a few different modulation sources. And maybe this last one we can try modulating with another output from the shape generator. And so now playing around with these things, I'll be able to get a cool kind of slowly modulating mix. There we go. Now we're, now we're talking. Sometimes these things just take a little bit of playing around with. And then I'm going to slow these all the way down. So we just get some stuff kind of floating through the sky. And now once you've got your basic patch set up, there's a lot of different things you could do. You could add in a secondary CV because we do have two CV inputs. So this one, I'm going to go out another pendulum channel. Get this really pretty slow. And we may want to get some color involved in the foreground as well. <clears throat> so probably the easiest way to get some kind of color signal is to go into a swatch. I'll sneak into these red, green, and blue inputs. And of course I can take some different outputs into these different inputs. I could also go to the shape that is modulating. And get some nice green and orange hills with my psychedelic background. We could switch now through our different shapes and get pretty radically different landscapes going on. So one of my favorite things to do is just switching through the dual shape generator. See if we can ever actually get back to the one we were on before, which is a challenge for me sometimes. So this is just a nice example of how you can use an oscillator for more than just your standard geometric shapes and patterns. In our last example, we'll look at how you can use the DW03 in combination with external video footage. For this last patch, we'll look at something a little bit different, and we'll see how you can use the DW03 as a texture generator. This effect works especially well in situations where you're working with external video footage. So to begin, let's look at some of the basic textures we can get. I've got a keyer patched up here because I know eventually that's where I'm going to go with this. For now, we'll just use this one input. And I've got channel one of the dual oscillator patched in here. I have a sine wave coming out. And right now I'm in the second position here. This is synced only to vertical, and it gives you some very cool glitchy looking stuff that eventually gets semi-stable, but uh, never really goes to like full stability, which is really nice for a very unique analog texture. So I'm gonna use that for one. And on the second channel, I'll do probably a little bit of a slower unsynced as well, just to get something a little bit different. 
Because the FKG has these full color inputs, I want to take advantage of that. So I'm going to use the swatch to colorize here. So I'm going to take both of these outputs and I'm going to go into these colored inputs on the swatch. We'll take a look at what that looks like. There'll be a whole separate video just about the swatch coming soon. It's a very cool, helpful utility module. And so now you see I'm getting some different colors here. <clears throat> I could play with the different inputs until I get a combination that I like. I think that looks pretty cool. Yeah. And again, we're just going for texture here, so I'm not looking for anything too static or too much of a shape. Well, there's also a Y input, which is kind of like a contrast input on the swatch. So I'm going to take a couple more outputs from these two. I'm going to use a keychain to mix them together. And I'll use that to go into my Y input. And you'll see that's just going to give me a little bit more contrast. So now we have these kind of black and white areas. And just to show you, if I do switch these to some more normal ranges, you know, we get just a basic shape. <clears throat> but by going into the less synced things, we can just get these nice noisy textures. Really cool glitchy stuff. And so once we have a texture that we kind of like, I'm going to take a color video from my TBC2. And let me just plug this straight into the encoder so you can see what we're working with here. This is a looping video played off a of Raspberry Pi. And it's just some fish swimming around an aquarium here. So the idea is to just use the keyer to key that texture into the areas where the fish are. So I'll plug these into another input here. And as we adjust the threshold, as you can see, we get that texture just on the fish area. And we can play around with some different ranges. And it's just a really cool way to get uh, quick and easy glitchy textures here. Of course, we can also add some CV to our frequency ranges. Let's just go ahead and do an LFO in there. So it's going to give me a little bit more variation. And if we wanted, just for fun, we could take those fish and just put them into the key input. So now we have this just over white. And then because we have so many outputs to work with on the DWO, we could just grab a few more of these. Throw them into a different color mix. So now we'll just get slightly different colored versions of the same noise as foreground and background. Which is a pretty cool effect. Now obviously if we wanted to fine tune this better, we could go into a matrix mixer and get a very specific color mix. So if we wanted something with a little more contrast, get a little bit of a darker background over a lighter foreground. And of course we don't have to go totally crazy with this. We could just do something more like this, which is pretty nice. And we could also rearrange these things so that we're just using one oscillator for the foreground and one for the background. So let's just say, We'll use oscillator one just to create that foreground texture. 
and we can use oscillator two for the background. So now we can have the fish just kind of glitching out and something kind of normal here for the background. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how to get started with your DW03. Please leave any questions in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.